All right, so that trade deadline was definitely something. It was definitely one of the trade deadlines of all time. Now, I'm not gonna go out and say that nothing happened, but these trades weren't exactly earth shattering. And I know, I know, your favorite team just made a trade that's gonna put them over the top and get them into the championship. Listen, I'm not saying that these trades weren't important. All I'm saying is that this time around, it didn't have that pizzazz that usually happens at the deadline. The biggest move that was supposed to happen was DeJounte Murray was supposed to go to the Lakers, but not only did he not move, the Lakers didn't move either. That being said though, I would like to talk about some trades that I did find interesting. Starting with the team that's been on a lot of people's mind lately, the Milwaukee Bucks. I recently made a video about them and their struggles and since then they've dropped more games. It's interesting to me that they added Pat Bev to the roster because shameless plug. In my last video I said that the Bucks got bullied versus the Jazz and what better player to add to the roster than the natural irritant himself. Pat Trick Beverly. Pat Bev also played for Doc so maybe he can help get the message from Doc to the players to communicate exactly what he's trying to implement. Bucks are different from other teams that Doc Rivers has coached because every team that Doc has taken over hadn't had success prior to him getting there. The Bucks, on the other hand just won a championship in 2021 so what that means is they're trying to get back to where they were previously. This is new territory for them and for Doc Rivers. I would like to see how Patrick Beverly fits into this lineup. Hopefully he can give them a little bit of what they lost when they traded away Drew Holiday. I think that move is impacting this team and the Celtics a lot more than they care to admit. But for now, they do have Patrick Beverly who even at his a little bit older age is still a solid defender and guy that can really get the locker room going when they're in the midst of a funk. All right, the next team I'm going to talk about is Patrick Beverly's former team, the Sixers. They added Buddy Heald for, let's say, below market value in many people's eyes. This move is interesting to me because it doesn't seem like the Sixers are punting on the season. With the injury to the reigning MVP Joel Embiid, I'm not saying that they should all out quit this season, but you would think that they wouldn't be as aggressive. I think either they know something about the injury that they're not saying or they're being extremely optimistic about their prospects if and when Embiid returns to the lineup. It could also be a move that was too good to pass up regardless of the way the team was looking injury wise. Either way I'm okay with it and I wonder where it will lead for them. Buddy Heald is a solid three point shooter who can add some much needing scoring and depth for the Sixers. Next up on the docket. The Thunder. The rich get richer as they add Gordon Hayward to the roster. There was a time when he was considered to be the two or three option on a championship contending team until that horrific leg injury. He's not the same player he was before the injury, but to me, this is a low risk, high reward move for OKC. They were okay without him and if it doesn't work, they should be all right. If it does, then they have more depth for the postseason. Either way it goes, I think they'll be okay. This is on top of the fact that the Oklahoma City Thunder are out here collecting picks like Thanos and they can make pretty much any trade that they want without having to sacrifice anything significant. Sam Presti has done a great job with this team. They're competing ahead of schedule and they have the draft capital to make moves when they need it. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about another team that shameless plug I've made a couple videos about. Unfortunately, they have a couple of injuries to key contributors to their team, but that didn't stop them from making, in my opinion, a really good move at the deadline. They added Burke and Bogdanovich to their lineup, and the only thing that seems to be holding this team back right now is injuries so far, but it seems like they're doing the right things during this trade deadline. These are just the trades that interested me. I'll leave a link for all the trades that happened during the trade deadline in the description. But that's going to do it for this one. 
Let me know what you guys think about the trade deadlines. Who got better, who got worse, and who stayed about the same. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you guys on the next one.